I recently posted a video in which I compared this smartphone with this Nikon D3000 taking photos at night in low light and I decided that the phone marginally won out uh, because of the quality and clarity of the images by just by one point effectively and I was a little bit unfair because I don't think I actually set this camera up properly to give it a good ROM for its money and to get the best use out of it. And what I found is the images that this camera produced were really soft. And that got me thinking, why were the images really soft on this camera? So what I've decided to do in this video is to come out, same place, try to take similar shots that I did before, with this camera and try to improve the quality of the image and try to make the images more sharp. So I've listed a, a, quite a few criteria what I could do with this camera to make it sharper. I'm going to take some test shots with this camera in auto mode and then take the, an equivalent shot with some manual settings, lots of different settings. And what I'll do is I'll explain to you exactly what the settings are I'm using and why I'm using them and why I hope that those settings really help me improve the quality of this image and make them sharper. I was really disappointed with the images I actually got from this camera. And that's because even though I used manual mode, I didn't change many of the settings. And I'll show, just show you one of those pictures now. And what you'll see on this picture, and when I zoom in a little bit, at least to 100%, that it's really soft and the writing that you see is really soft and the whole image wasn't very good quality and I don't think I gave this camera the, the best chance to do well in this competition. So as I said, I'm going to have a look around where I am now at Lincoln University and try to replicate a couple of those pictures and hopefully improve the quality of this camera and by doing so I might show you some of the things I'm doing to get a sharper picture with this camera. And you might be able to do the same with your camera if you're struggling with softness of your images as well. So let's have a look and let's see how I do. I decided to do the comparison in low light because a viewer from one of my videos left a comment that suggested that a phone could take much better pictures than a purpose camera in low light. Uh, and that's what I'm going to try to do now. Uh, it's it's about eight o'clock in the evening, so I've probably got about an hour to wait until the light gets really low. So I'm going to have a little wander around the campus and wait for the light to go down, and then I'll take a couple of shots. There's a lot of activity at the moment around the Brayford Pool, which might make some nice photos. Looks like I'm in luck because this motorcycle's still here, so I'm definitely going to try and get a picture of this. Nikon D3000, the sky above the cathedral, the colour, it looks amazing. I've got to take this shot. I'm an aperture priority. This isn't part of the test, but I just love this image, so I'm going to go for it. The sky is amazing, hopefully this comes out. I'll show you that now actually. Let's have a look at that picture now. The reflection on this water, the colours are amazing. So I'm going to just do a potluck shot with the Nikon and I'll try and get a nice shot of uh, this water leading towards the boat. So I'm, I can't see what I'm doing. I'm just going to have a guess, take a couple of shots. I'm in aperture priority. Let's see how these look. So I've decided I can't wait any longer. The light is, is going dim now, although it's a beautiful sky tonight. And it's a shame I'm not spending a lot of time photographing that. Although I have walked around the campus and taken a few shots and hopefully I've got a nice shot of the sun, the sun setting. Uh, and I've used all the pictures I've taken this evening. I've used the Nikon D3000. So I'm going to take a picture of this motorcycle behind me and we can have a look at that now. Firstly, I'll take a picture in fully automatic 
and then I'll take a picture in manual and just explain the settings I'm going for. This first image is fully automatic. I've got the camera in auto. It's on one quarter of a second, f4.5, and the ISO it's giving me is auto. It doesn't say. So I'll take this shot now. First one. There it is. There's the shot. It gives you the motorbike, the um, the histogram and the settings. It looked like it was ISO 400. So that's the first one. And now I'm going to take the shot fully manual and explain what I'm doing. For this image, I'm on fully manual mode and the light meter is set. Let's have a look at the settings now to start with. So the metering is, the metering is on evaluative. Uh, the the focus mode is on fine focus, just on on a point. Uh, I'm going to change the autofocus to um, a AFS to not continuous, so it's single autofocus. I'm going to change the release mode to two second timer because the last time I did this, I just did it manually. Every time I took the shot, it wobbled. Uh, ISO is 100. Auto uh, white balance, that's fine. So they're the, the settings I've got so far. Uh, now what I'm going to do is, on this camera in particular, I understand the sweet spot is about f8 on this lens, on this 1845 kit lens, the sweet spot is about f8. So I'm going to f8. I'm going to reduce the shutter speed right down to three seconds. So I'm going to go for a three second exposure I'm going F8, ISO 100, is in a two second timer, auto white balance, I'm going for evaluative metering, uh, and I'm going for um, focused uh, spot focusing. What I'm also going to do is uh, turn off vibration reduction, because, because it's on the tripod, and uh, it, if, it, if I leave vi vibration reduction on, which is stabilization, then the camera might be expecting the, the, the movement. And because it won't get movement, it might be confused. And in that case, it might actually give me a softer image. So I'm all set. So let's take this image now. So here we go. Two second timer. One, two. There's the image. It's taking three seconds to take that image. And there we have the picture. It looks a bit darker than the auto picture and it's ISO 100. So let's have a look at that now. That's that's the first one taken. Now on to the second image. So in my last video, I took a picture of this underpass. This time I'm just going straight auto. Uh, I'm not going to do anything else. So straight auto. I'll take the shot now. This gives me uh, one, one eighth of a second, F3.5, ISO 400, 18 mil. So now I'm going to change the settings and put them all onto uh, my manual settings as I did before with the motorcycle. Once again, I've got this set to F8, two second timer, ISO 100, uh, 2.5 seconds, and I've got uh, vibration reduction off. So let's see what this, this, this image gets us. So here we go. Two second timer. There it is. There's the picture should be taken now. And there's the picture of uh, the underpass and we can have a look at that too so this is my final image I'm on auto it's giving me a half a second I'm on that says f5 that's fine half a second f5 so I've got the cathedral in the background and I'm going to take this shot now that's it I've taken the shots with the Nikon D3000 and by the power of video editing in YouTube Let's go back to my house and we'll have a look at these images and compare them on my computer at home. I'm back home now, and I have to admit, I really enjoyed the process of taking those photos out at the university. And if you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like? And if you like these videos that I'm producing, it'd be even better if you subscribe to the channel. That would be fantastic. Let's have a look at the comparison of the pictures I took and let's see where that takes us. So here I am looking at the... Uh, the pictures of the motorcycle and this one on the left is the automatic fully automatic picture and this one on the right is the fully manual picture and they look fairly similar the the manual picture looks a little bit lighter i have done a very little bit of editing and exactly the same editing on both uh, images although i've slightly lightened the one on 
um, the, the manual image because it was a bit dark. But let's have a look at these two images now. So if I zoom into 100%, and it's important that I don't go over 100%, because if I do, then I bring in distortion of my actual screen when I'm looking at these pictures and potentially your um, phone or your tablet or your computer, whatever you're watching this video on, the distortion will obviously play its part. And I've got to be honest, there's not a massive amount of difference. Although all I'm going to say, uh, uh, perhaps my own feeling, that the image on the right, which is the uh, manual image where I did F8, is tiny bit sharper than the auto image. But there's not, there's almost nothing in it. Um, so I, as I said, I'm not going to go above 100%, but let's just go a little bit above 100% to see if I can help to, to make our minds up. Now, once I go beyond 100%, there's starting to be a little bit of um, purple fringing on the, the lettering of the word triumph on the manual one, but it's not on the auto, but the auto one is slightly softer. So I'm going to say uh, for that image, I'm going to give the um, the manual settings uh, the benefit. Just It's only that much. It's really minute, tiny, uh, tiny bit. Now, let's have a look at the image uh, under the underpass and see what that one looks like. Here's the underpass and once again there's so little in this it's incredible. I think the, 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 this, the one on the right is the manual shot and I think that's, that's slightly sharper than the auto shot. You can see this looks really much softer than this. This is 100% uh, and I'm going to give the um, the manual shot, uh, the, the the benefit of this one as well. So I think this one definitely stands out. The, the, it, it's 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 minute. It's not as big as I thought it would be, and uh, but it's definitely definitely you're better off getting as you can get a sharper image using uh, the manual. So that's that's proof. That's definitely proof that I think the manual is better, and the settings I used has improved the sharpness of this image. Now, what we'll do is have a look at the picture I took of the cathedral. Unfortunately, I don't know what I did with that picture, but the the focus must have been completely out because both the manual and the automatic shots were completely awful. So I'm just not going to do any comparison. I'll just show you how bad a photographer I am or how badly I can get the settings wrong. Uh, and then what I might do, what might be interesting, if I compare uh, one of these shots to one of the shots that I took, um, recently, a, a month or two ago, when I did that phone comparison video, and we could just have a look, at, just compare one manually focused or man, manual setting shot compared to the phone shot, and see what the difference is. So this is the picture of the, of the cathedral in the background, and as you can see, this is a hundred percent, and it's just blurry. And I, I'll be honest, the um, the the automatic one was blurry as well. So I. I'm certain I didn't get the right focus point and it's just blurry. The whole picture's blurry in order to become all this. So yeah, one final little look, one final little check is I'll I'll compare um the let's say I compare the motorcycle, um the one that I took with the phone compared to the one that I've taken last night and we'll see what the difference is. Let's have a look at the images of the motorcycle. This was the one I've most recently taken for this video. And this was the one I took in my previous video. I have to admit, this image is, was lighter, that it wasn't quite as dark as you can tell. This is proper darkness. This was a couple of months ago, so the light drew in a lot quicker. So the, to straight away, the one on the left might have had an advantage anyway. So if we zoom in to 100, uh, obviously this is the phone image. And I, I'm going to say immediately, you don't need to see much of this image, to be, these images really need to see that. There's a massive difference between the uh, the the manual settings on the Nikon uh, in a little bit better light than the the foam. You can see the word scrambler is so much clearer. That's got lines through it. It it doesn't look. It looks. It doesn't. It looks soft. It doesn't look sharp at all. Where the the manually um, setting the manual settings on the camera that's much better. So although this is not the best test in the world, it's not a super test it does prove though that um, despite the difference in light levels that uh, if you set your camera up on manual mode use manual settings 
take off stabilization if you're on a tripod use the two second timer try to hit the sweet spot of your lens uh, hopefully you will get a much much better image and an image you'll be pleased with and it should be that should possibly be better than the image you would get from your phone uh, that's my conclusion anyway I, I was hoping to end on that conclusion i'm pleased that i have uh, because i just really didn't think that that the, the, the uh, firstly i didn't i couldn't believe that the phone would be better than the camera and and secondly i couldn't believe how bad those shots were that i took uh, a month or two ago and i knew i could do better than that thank you very much indeed for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one cheerio